your body. Don't you own it? I would think so. But if government can tell us what we can put into our own bodies, we don't really own ourselves. If government controls something so basic, that suggests there's no limit to what government can do. The economist Ludwig von Mises once wrote, once the principles admitted that it's the duty of government to protect the individual against his own foolishness, why not prevent him from reading bad books and bad plays? The mischief done by bad ideologies is more pernicious than that done by narcotic drugs. Right on, Ludwig! <laughs> All drugs should be legal. It's easier to make the argument for marijuana, but I don't think that's really honest. Either we own our body or we don't. Now, I admit that the idea of all these drugs being legal is frightening. What if more people use, abuse? What if more kids use? I have kids. My first instinct when I reported on the drug laws was to be glad that cocaine and heroin are illegal. That meant my kids couldn't go down to the neighborhood drugstore and buy something to get them high. Maybe that would deter them. But I don't know that. Maybe the opposite's true. There's the forbidden fruit effect. Drugs being illegal may make them more desirable to teens. Now my kids are adults. They're over 21. I still don't want them to smoke crack, but they are adults. It should be their choice. I suspect a certain percentage of Americans will use drugs, no matter what the law says. And in fact, our government says about 8% of Americans do now. And that hasn't changed much over the years, despite the crackdowns. By contrast, Portugal decriminalized all drug use, and drug use hasn't changed there. In fact, they have lower rates of drug use than America has. By contrast, what good has drug prohibition accomplished? We've turned the corner on drug addiction in the United States. President Nixon was wrong then, and since then we've spent billions more. Authorities keep announcing major successes. This operation, Sudden Fall, resulted in the arrest of over 100 individuals. It's not as if they're not trying. Every day, American police arrest 4,000 people for selling or using. That's more than are arrested for assault, burglary, vandalism, rape, and murder combined. We've locked up a higher percentage of our people than any other country. That allows even China to criticize America's human rights record. And what good has this done? Drug users still buy drugs, but they buy them on the black market where nasty things happen. And that is why I've come to believe that the drug laws are worse than the drugs. The laws have so many nasty unintended consequences. I'll just list three. First, there's the crime. It's caused by the drug laws. People talk about drug crime, but drugs themselves are rarely the cause. Few people get high and then run out to commit crimes because they're high. Most drugs just make people sleepy and stupid. The crime happens because the product's illegal. Since drug sellers can't rely on the police to protect their property, they form gangs and arm themselves. Drug buyers steal to pay the high black market prices. Our government says nicotine is as addictive as heroin. But no one's knocking over 7-Elevens to get a pack of Marlboros. The difference is that cigarettes are legal. Heroin isn't. Corruptions, another unintended consequence. Cops are now being offered ten, twenty thousand dollar bribes. Not all turn them down. A former Detroit police chief told me, with all the cash, it's easy to purchase police officers and prosecutors and judges. Third, drug prohibition creates unbelievably rich criminal gangs. We've forgotten that alcohol prohibition created Al Capone. The gangs we're creating now are much richer. Thousands are murdered in Mexico and the violence is spreading to America. Reporters then talk about smuggling and Mexican cocaine cartels like those are just facts. But they are government created facts. There's, there are no French wine cartels. No one is smuggling Corona beer from Mexico to America. You just ship it. The drug laws meant to make us safer, make us less safe. So. Why is America doing this? Well, to protect us from ourselves. But if that's the right thing to do in a free society, we should have food police who come into our homes and make sure there's no ice cream in the house, and exercise police who make us run laps and do push-ups. The bottom line is that the drug laws do more damage than the drugs. We should hold people accountable 
for harm they do to others, not for harm they do to themselves. But, you know, we're from the government and we're here to help you. So we don't want you to mess around with hemp. You might smoke that stuff. I found out that if you want to smoke and get marijuana out of hemp, you have to have a marijuana cigarette as big as a telephone pole. And then you might get something. But it's back to the saying about why do they regulate our personal habits anyway? Why don't we, why don't we allow them to decide what's good for us? Justice. It's not about agenda. It's not about mobilizing people. It's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders. The United States of America is a terrorist base of operations. <laughs>